Welcome to this new series that we're going to be running on the channel. It is us trying things for the very first time. First one we're going to be trying is Millipa. Now, before we get into this, I'll just explain a bit more about why we're doing this. How many times have you seen an amazing video of someone doing painting or building terrain or using a tool and you think, that looks so easy, I can do that. So you go, you buy it, and you get home and you start using it and discover, ah, this isn't as easy as I thought it was going to be. And your results will vary very much. You might be lucky enough and skilled enough to get exactly what you saw on the video or read about or the photos, but a lot of us end up with something that looks awful and it is disheartening. And that's when you realise these people that are showing off these products and how to do things, they've done it for years, they're very talented, and they're used to these products. Now, like everyone, like riding a bike, first time you get on a bike, you're falling off. You're not going to be riding perfect, but it looks quite easy. So I thought, why don't we start a series where we show you these products, and you get to see what results you get from someone that's never used it before. Someone that's not spent years using them and is very talented with it so you will see what you get from the first time using it so let's get into it Millipat. Let's start with what Millipat is. Millipat is a two-part epoxy putty which is very highly adhesive to most materials which is fantastic. Um, generally it's used for filling gaps, also people use it for sculpting, um, adding on extras like capes, weapons, bits of armour, things like that. Now it's pretty much the same as green stuff but the big difference is you get, what is this, 4 ounces, or 114 grams basically, for £3 off of Amazon. Whereas the green stuff was, I think, £12 when I looked, for pretty much the same amount. And when looking up, it seems to be that green stuff is far better for when you're, for example, sculpting a cape onto the back of a miniature because it's slightly more flexible than Millipat. Millipat goes rock hard and is seemingly a bit brittle so it is fantastic for filling gaps in the miniatures if you're doing conversions and things like that. Um, I will open it up and before I do I will just let you know I have opened this and I have tried it because the audio screwed up on my videos because I was just using a headset and now I've bought a proper microphone so I am actually re-filming this. Um, you will see me using it on a converted miniature, um, this guy here, which was made from Ard Boys, uh, which is the Age of Sigmar models, and mixed with um, some parts from the Orc knobs to make a Cool looking guy. Now, at the back, I won't show you, um, there is a gap in the armour where obviously the parts do not fit because they're not built to fit together. Um, so I use Millipat to fill it in. Now, I was going to, like the footage is absolutely fine, so I was going to just do the audio over the top of it and I thought, well, no, because you're not getting my first impressions of it and. I'm not going to give the same emotions recording over it, so I thought I'm going to use that footage and use that audio. Now the audio is not great, so I do apologise, but it gives my first impression. So anyway, in the box you get two sticks of the putty. Um, like green stuff, at first I thought, oh, it's blue and 
kind of a yellow, so it'll mix to green just like green stuff. But actually, it is grey. So it's not as obvious when mixing. Green stuff is good as well because when you're mixing it, you will see like a marbled effect. So you will have your green and you'll have your uh, sorry, you'll have your blue and you'll have your yellow and when you stop seeing that and it's just all green, you know it's well mixed. This doesn't really change much. Um, so I will grab my knife. Now literally all you're doing is a 50-50 mix of these. Um, so I will just make up a wee bit. So just a wee slither. And oops, the same again for this one. Now it doesn't have to be 100% the same. It just needs to roughly be the same. Um, so you don't need to weigh it or anything like that because I know some people that use this and literally they weigh it so it is exactly 50-50. But you don't need to do that. So I will give this a wee mix up and let's say I've used this before and it's quite sticky. So be prepared to get stuff stuck over your finger. Now to start with, it's not very sticky, but I kind of find that the more you mix it, and the more it's becoming one universal piece of putty, that's when it gets really sticky. So that's a good sign of when you're ready to use it. Now it says five minutes, I did it for two minutes and it was absolutely fine. Um, so I will mix this up for a bit and let's say I do apologise the next bit of footage with me using it for the very first time ever. Um, the video is fine, it's just the audio so I do apologise for it but I thought no, I need to keep it in because it is my first ever reactions with it and I cannot replicate that. Um, so yeah, enjoy. Okay. So it has been five minutes of kneading, mixing, just rolling it about, and it is quite sticky, which I presume is supposed to be, because obviously it's got a stick to it. So let's get our little model here. So it's just in this back shoulder, we're going to stick some soap. Let us use, I have no idea, well it's not going to be the round one. Let's get this little chisel one, and can we scoop a bit? Yeah, we can scoop a bit. Um, let me just put it in. Get that wee push in just to make sure it gets right in that joint. And ooh. now straight away. I could tell that the people in the video were doing something different because theirs didn't seem very clumpy. So I wonder if it needs some water. So I am just wetted the silicone. Oh yeah. Okay. There we go. We plant something new. Wet your tool because it smooths so well. What a difference. No, I may have used too much because I have no idea how to hide this. Do I make it look like this armor plate is curving around? Do I add some chain mail by pinpoints? Um, do I kind of shorten the fat? Okay, it is working itself into looking like shoulder blade, not shoulder blade, shoulder pad. So let's go with that and try to shape it so it looks like it curves around. So if I curve it like that, just follow the shoulder pad around, kind of works. Use my finger, maybe? Hmm. Okay, I think I need to clean this off.
Is it clean easy? Yeah, it just comes straight off, which is fantastic. So, let's get the excess off here. Just like that. This is actually really nice stuff to work with. Definitely when you get your tool wet, it makes it, oops, a bit more malleable. Right, I want to push that into the joint, into the joint. Curve it round. Hmm. I'm not 100% sure. No, I have never sculpted anything before. So, obviously, there might be some people watch this screaming, saying you're using the wrong tool. I have an idea. We have curved this round, so it kind of looks like this. There's a bit here. If I get my little pointy thing, go stab, stab, stab. Does it look like chain mail? Hmm. Nope. Can't be. Let's wet the brush. Try to rub it out. Does it rub it? Oh. Okay, this is going to work then. There's this bit at the top here that I don't like. How do I fix that? Oh, I'll just rub it off. Okay, so as you can see, it is kind of worked. What is this? Let's get rid of that. Okay, it needs a wee bit of a clean up. So, I'm presuming I can kind of pick it up. Yeah, and then rub it off and paper towel. Pick it up and rub it off. Alright, let's get a wee close up of this. So, here he is. Um, once again, I do apologise for the audio quality in that video clip, but I felt we had to use it, because, like you saw, I was very surprised with how well this stuff works. Um, as you can see at the back, it's dried rock hard. It is completely flush with it, so it does look like one piece of armour. And when this is painted up, it's just going to blend in completely. Um, the bits in the chain mail, yeah, they can just pop out. Um, yeah. So clean up with this stuff is really good. Um, there's a big chunk just down in here, which is not wanting to come out, which is good because it shows it stays in and adheres to the plastic, but the bits that are very just tiny little amounts can be popped out. This big bit, let's try break it. Now, I'm putting a good bit of force in that and it is stuck in solid. So there's going to be no issues with this falling out or anything like that. That is stuck in really, really well. Um, what I did as well was just out of curiosity, I used some extra green stuff just to make some little bits to see how brittle it is. So I rolled up a bit, just into a little thin tube, and yeah, it doesn't snap, it does have slight give, and then it just breaks. So for cabling or piping or anything like that, green stuff's what you're going to have to use. Um, tried to do a bit that was a bit like 
material so it is thin and oh yeah oh no this just crumbles away so again green stuff is what you're going to be wanting to use for any capes or things like that um, another thing I tried was trying to do a rock because you can do bases and it looked quite easy now my rock has not come out that great <laughs> but I tried and the bits around it where it's thin is just breaking off but this big chunk let's see if we can cut it so it is quite thick and quite a new blade on it oh. I can get into it but it's not cutting through easy I kind of feel that the blade is going to pop out there we go so we cut through it it did take a lot of pressure um, there's no way to snap this at all so Milliput, if you're going to be using it for thick things, definitely go for it. Um, let's try and see if I can make a dent in this one. No, not really. Um, pop that to the side. A lot of people use it for bases. Now, I did record myself doing a base with the Green Stuff World rollers, um, which if a lot of people probably know about them but if not they are just rolling pins that have patterns in them you get loads of different ones now again the audio for the footage was awful and to be honest it wasn't that exciting I let you put the green stuff on spread it out got the rolling pin and rolled over it now I put a lot of pressure on it kind of the pressure you'd be doing if you were trying to get to work with XPS foam or anything so a decent amount of pressure it mushed it all it pulled it up off the base so I re squashed it down and very light pressure like super light pressure um, another thing is wet this wet your tools don't do them in anything dry because I tried cleaning this up and there is bits still stuck in here now let's see if I can actually get it out with yeah so it can be scraped out so just be super careful make sure your material is um your roller is wet if you're going to be using rollers um, I have seen some photos and videos of people using these rollers on bases and they come out amazing so that was a quick one I did. Very light touch and it is rock hard. At the side these bits come off. The very thin overspill comes off which is nice. So for clean up, super simple. Um, but let's see how well this is stuck on. Can I pull this up? Yes. There we go. So it does stick well to it, but if you get under the lip of it and pull it up, it does come off. So that's a wee bit disappointing, but generally, when you've got these miniatures, if I yank on his arm, he's going to snap. So miniatures, you do not throw them about or anything. So yeah, I would use Millipot for doing the bases because I look after my miniatures. So there's not going to be an issue with that. Um, it picks up great detail on it as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to try painting up. Just going to do a base coat on this guy just to see if it does hide these two different materials and blends it into one. Um, I might actually prime this and do just a light dry brush just to highlight it um, to see what it looks like. So yeah, let's get on with that. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the airbrush and just give this guy a wee prime and see how he looks and see if it actually blends in properly. Um, right, let's get the airbrush. And give him a wee coat. Yeah, straight away. Let's just get the side in there. Just from above. Below that has pretty much blended it in. It'll be hard to tell since it's all black, but I'm gonna do a zenithal highlight with some white ink and that will really show us what we're working with here. Just because obviously with everything being matte black it's not going to make it obvious. So that's one thing, if you do a lot of miniatures, you should get yourself an airbrush, especially for priming. It makes life so much simple and it's nice thin layers, as you can see. Super thin. So you keep all your details dries super quick and you can just get onto painting. Right, so let's get some white ink. But I will quickly spray up that just to use up the rest of this. Yeah, yeah it's pretty much covered it, so that'll be fine. So get the white ink. For the Zenithal highlight I'm using acrylic ink uh, by Liquitex which is titanium white. It is a uh, opaque ink and it is amazing. Um, especially if you're using airbrushes because straight away you can just take it out and go straight into your airbrush. You do not need to dilute it or anything like that. It's just perfect. I'll just put a few drops in. If I put a wee bit more. Um, it's good as well because straight away with it being a dropper, any ink you've still got in your little pot, you can just suck it back up and use it later. Check it's coming through. Yep. So let's do a zenithal highlight with this guy. And it'll show off any flaws with this join at the back. So fingers crossed. Okay, I can see it. You can see there is a slight difference in texture but I didn't really clean it up super well. So my opinion on it would be it will work if you put some time into it. If um, you did a bit of sanding, I did no sanding on it. Literally all I did was put it on, smoothed it off uh, with the silicone brushes and I think I got rid of all the excess just with the scalpel. Um, but actually, from a distance, from above, you couldn't tell. It's only when you really inspect it that you see it. Um, with the base here, I just put on some white. Just try to show off detail so you can see. Let's put a wee bit more. There we go. You can see the detail that is picked up with the Green Stuff World rollers. Um, there are other rollers out there. Um, I've just got the Green Stuff World ones. And yeah, they're super for bases. Like I say, if you handle them carefully, 
then you're not going to have an issue with them. Um, right, let's get cleaned up. So, I was thinking while cleaning the airbrush, which is always a fun job, since this has actually taken really well and blended really well with our terrain that we make, this is one of our Jersey barriers. Um, this is one of our damaged ones. Um, we do have non-damaged versions as well. Um, they come in a pack of 12 uh, for 4 .99. Now, with the two pieces when they interlock, they're not 100% perfect because it'd be such a tight fit. And there's a tiny little gap. Now, just me being really picky when I paint these up, I like to use a bit of filler just to completely hide that gap, make it all look universal and all one piece. Now, the problem with the filler, a lot of the primers it doesn't take well to, and it has different shades. So I thought, with a little bit of green stuff, I wonder if I can fill this little gap and blend it in. So I might actually discover that this is a wonderful product for even doing terrain, not just models. So if I get a little silicone brush and it's slightly wet and just smear it in, just get pushing it into that gap, we will see, let's see if I use my finger just to push it down. Yeah, this seems to be working. Get the war. Oh, that was not war. That was my dirty war. That's fine. <laughs> that is airbrush primer. So it won't make any difference. Now it's just very black looking. But yeah, that has filled that gap. see. Yeah, running my nail along it. I cannot feel that gap. So there we go. Another great thing for Milliput is if you buy any definitely laser cut terrain because it obviously comes in pieces and you build it yourself. Um, yeah, you could use filler if you really want to hide those gaps and make it all blend because when this is painted up like I say, running my nail along it I cannot feel that gap where with this side I can feel the gap it's obvious that there is a gap there so yeah, I'm really pleased with this stuff um, yeah, overall I would probably say Millipot is kind of the equivalent to the putty world duct tape. Duct tape you can use for anything. Milliput we can use for filling gaps. We can use for sculpting. We can use it on terrain just to hide gaps. Um, well it does say we can do a lot because we can do model making, sculpting, boat repairs, car body repairs. <laughs> Um, batteries, radiators, exhausts, DIY, plumbing, and household repairs. So, if you're not going to be doing capes and probably weapon blades and things like that, get Millipot. Because you can do everything you need in your hobby with Millipot. And then, if something goes wrong in the house, your radiator started leaking. Well, I can go get my Milliput. So, for the price, £3, and that was with Amazon Prime, so free shipping as well, I would say give it a try. What can you get nowadays for £3? Pretty much like a Costa coffee or Starbucks coffee. So, for £3, give it a go. There's many things you can do with this. Let's say there are some amazing videos on YouTube and a lot of forums um, that 
show off what you can do with this stuff. This was me using it for the first time and I found it pretty easy. There was a few things I learned, um, obviously with your tools, make sure that they're wet um, and don't go too thin with them. Um, like example, the pipes and things. Don't make thin pipes unless it's for like a diorama and you're not going to be touching it. Then yeah, they're absolutely fine for it. Um, yeah, I would say give it a go. I'm definitely adding this to my arsenal of crafting stuff. Um, after this I'm going to be going and looking what else can I do with it. I know that there's people that make sandbags out of them. So just simply sculpt it down into a sandbag shape and then get some material to put on top of it. It leaves that material line in it and then just with a few pinches it looks like a sandbag. Um, so I might actually have a go at sculpting at some point and do a video where we try sculpting for the first time. But hopefully you have found this video useful in making your decision if this is something you want. Um, if there's anything you're wanting me to try, leave it down in the comments and yeah, I'm happy to give anything a try. If there's something that a lot of people are wanting to see, we'll get it, we'll try it. And if it is something that I have used before, don't worry, I will tell you that I've used it before and it's not my first time. Um, but yeah, thank you. You have a good day. Bye. Here's a fun little game for you if you want. In the comments, how many times did I call this green stuff? The box was sitting just out of frame, so Millipot is screaming at me. But there's still quite a few times that I call this green stuff. So yeah, it was a fun little game for you. Enjoy.